Hello, welcome to SageX3 uh, quick video tutorials. Uh, today's session I'm going to talk about purchase invoicing element carrying dimensions. So I'm going to discuss um, regarding the uh, setup of the purchase invoicing element, default dimensions, and a short demo uh, to explain how the invoicing elements uh, with dimensions uh, get carried over from the PO to the receipt or to the invoice. So let's take a quick look at the um, um, setup of the uh, default dimensions and the purchase invoicing elements and then we'll run through a scenario. Okay, so first I would like to uh, show you the invoicing element that I'm going to use for this uh, example. So let's go to the purchase invoicing elements function, uh, GES PFY1. And it's under setup uh, purchasing invoicing elements. So the uh, invoicing element I'm using here is freight charges. And that's the standard setup. I didn't change anything here. And the default dimensions for the invoicing elements can be set under the analytical grid. So you can either set up a default dimension here, or you, you would have other various ways that you can uh, set up a default dimension for the invoicing element, depending on the default dimension setup. So what happens when we set up set it up here is that when you create a PO based on your default dimension setup, the dimension used on this screen will be used on the PO and then the receipts and the invoices. All right, so let's go to the default uh, dimensions setup. So default dimension setup um, is on the uh, set up financials, um, accounting interface and default dimensions. So there's G, S, C, D, E. So I have uh, used the selection menu to filter the, the required invoicing element uh, default dimension setup. So there are three, so one is POV is for purchase invoice elements, PTV is for the receipts and PIV is for the invoice. All right, so let's begin with the POV, uh, purchase invoicing element. So for purchase invoicing element, I'm using only one dimension type, CCT, and the cost center or the dimension for cost center is coming from the supplier. So the supplier record that is used on the purchase order has to have a dimension value. Otherwise you will have a, a blank dimension on the invoicing element. So for supplier, uh, we also want to make sure the identifiers are correct, right? So you can test that out first to make sure if it works fine or not. And then for the receipts, um, for the receipt, uh, the um, dimension is going to come from the source document. So the source document of the receipt would be the purchase order. So we already have the PO uh, that has the supplier uh, dimensions. And then on the receipt, it's going to use the dimensions on the PO. Okay, the, so, so, so the source document, um, the formula here has to be PVF. Uh, PVF is the uh, PVCR FOOT table, Purchase Document Footer Element Table. So this table will get populated with the um, information relevant for the PO. Uh, and then when you create the receipt, it will look up that information and then um, populate the dimensions on the receipt. All right, and then finally, the PIV is the invoice, invoicing element, um, and that is also I'm using the 
uh, source document. So here the source document is the same, uh, PDF. All right. Um, so once you have those set up defined, we can go ahead and run a quick uh, scenario uh, to see how it works in the system. So I, I've also added the invoicing element on the supplier record. I can just quickly show you that. For NA009 on the Financials tab, uh, you can see the analytical grid. I have the cost center dimension type, dimension SUPL-001 uh, populated. Okay, um, so once we have the setup in place, uh, let's create a purchase order. So for the purchase order, I'm going to use the site NA023. And order date, supplier is a 009. And then, and then just tap through the lines and enter the product. the invoicing element that we are going to use on the purchase order, which is the freight, that is number two, and the amount $25. And so you can see for cost center, uh, the SUPL001 is uh, defaulting from the, the supplier on the PO. So generate the PO. Uh, let's go and create the receipt. So for the receipts, uh, I'm using the same site, receiving site, and the supplier, and select the order. So you can see the invoicing element defaults from the purchase order and the dimensions as well. So create the view, um, so the receipt. And then finally, uh, let's create the invoice. So the invoicing site is NA023, invoicing type is IMV, um, supplier is NA009, and then the document number, we can just uh, give some reference to that. Um, and then we need to select the, uh, the 
constant. So we see two ending in minimum one. So when we select the receipt, um, we need to enter the amount for the invoicing element, the invoice. Um, and then if we scroll to the right, we can see the dimension for the call center uh, is defaulted uh, from the source document. So we can generate the invoice. And then we can post the invoice. So invoice is posted and let's take a look at the accounting document. Let's take some time for the system to generate the uh, posting uh, for the invoice. Mm, journal entry is here and then let's go and take a look at the lines. Um, so you can see the invoicing element $25 and the other lines you have for the invoice. All right, so that's all I wanted to show you today. Uh, one more thing, like I uh, um, just wanted to mention is like if you are using a different uh, default dimension uh, for the invoicing element, uh, please um, test the um, the setup as well as the uh, scenario uh, before you uh, try it on your live system. I hope uh, this is um, beneficial for you and uh, uh, I will see you next time on a different um, uh, video um, on a different topic.